Here, Marlon has been on my case to do a boat walkthrough for you guys. That's about the best meal you'll ever get in a boat. We actually have a new product that we're gonna be featuring at the end of this episode, so you guys gotta watch all the way till the end. White faced fish, probably headed to one of the lower tribs, but still a springer nonetheless. Tag him up! Good job, dude. You wanna... Hey guys, before we start this episode, we just got done fishing. <coughs> Hey guys, before we start this episode today, we just got done fishing and filming another episode that you're gonna see shortly. But while we got the opportunity here, Marlon has been on my case to do a boat walkthrough for you guys. We will always watch your comments, we we'll always read on all the videos that you guys post, and we've seen it a couple times where people have asked questions about what's in our boat, why we use it, and some of the products and some of the things that we use to make, basically going out there and catching salmon and steelhead, honestly, a little easier. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick two minute walk through and show you guys what I really enjoy about my Illumawald Columbia. All right guys, so first off, I purchased this boat at Stevens Marine and I had them equip it with the brand new Mercury 225 horsepower four stroke. So far, I have a thousand plus hours on this engine and it has flawless performance. The compression checks always come out great. And all I do is make sure I keep up on my maintenance. I feed it oil, I feed it filters, and I let them go through it once a year and do anything that they need. And so far the motor has been absolutely flawless. I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Great fuel economy, great performance for taking me and six guys. Um, couldn't say more about it. Followed by the 15 horse EFI Mercury Kicker. This little guy, I can't imagine how many thousands of hours I have on it. It's smooth, it's reliable, there's no choking, there's no nothing. I push the button, it starts. It's been a fantastic kicker. I, it has to have over five or 6,000 hours on it in the last four years. Amazing motor setup. Um, I have all the maintenance done at Stevens Marine, so these guys know it. They know their Mercury's. They're the third largest Mercury dealer in the country, and they can do a really good job taking care of you guys. I have it equipped with the power steering. A lot of the tillers that are coming out um, these days have a power steering. This is not a power um, assist. It's actually a hydraulic pump that turns the motor for you. Um, so some of the other um, hydraulic steerings and hydraulic locks out there um, just kind of hold the motor, but they don't actually allow the motor to be pushed. Um, you actually have to put all the force into it when you're driving and turning, but having the power steering, it's effortless. It's one finger operation, even at high speeds. Um, it's great, it's an awesome safety feature too because if I were to hit something, the boat's gonna stay square in the water. It's not gonna throw that motor to the side and cause the boats to burn out. So we just got done fishing today and don't worry because just because you see the pink stain on the boat, don't worry about it because it's the Procure Badass dye and it breaks down in UV and you won't see it after a day or two, but you can see things are kind of dirty. Uh, we pulled up some gear on the bottom, but I really like how this Illumilog Columbia was built with the two thirds transom with the extra trays. I've got extra weights down here. I've got my plug cutter right here. I've got another net holder for a vertical when I like to use it for kokanee or when I use it for ocean coho. And then I have just a tray that I can just kind of throw all the little knickknacks and just kind of the stuff that I'm using or stuff that I need to get to. I just kind of have a spot for it under the motor. And since I'm always right here kind of driving, it's really convenient to have that double tray right there. Of course, we've got the wash down sink plumbed to hot water. Um, and now let's look at the electronics package. First thing you're gonna notice when you look at the stern of the boat is I've got a fish fighter transom mount for my live technology holder. And what this does is this pole goes down and it puts the live imaging transducer into the bottom and I've got this thing equipped with the Hummingbird Mega Live. Now before you guys run out and try to decide to buy, buy some of this live technology for salmon and steelhead fishing, I will say that it's been a fun technology. We've learned some interesting things of it. As far as it being something that is an absolute must, I'm not gonna go out on a limb and tell it. It can be fairly expensive to get into, but it's a very new technology and I think as we see some of this technology evolve, uh, that might change in very, very short years. So I've got this transom pole and what this does is that transducer sits out of the water because it needs to be able to access clean water under the boat that doesn't have boils or anything so it can image and it, it can basically use the sonar to project the image uh, as clear as possible. So what this thing does, it pulls out. I've got this little guy that twists, it drops and then slides down. So when it slides down, guys, it's very easy. It's very compact, it keeps it out of the way. I can directionally turn the transducer so when I wanna look in certain directions. And then I can also very quickly pull it up into the boat for when I'm making very short passes when I'm springer fishing or out there on the Columbia River doing some salmon fishing or hopping from hole to hole. Very convenient, very compact. I haven't found another transom mount out there that's, that's honestly better than this. 
I have done some customization just for this Alumawald Columbia, but one thing nice about Fish Fighter and their products is a lot of their stuff is interchangeable and you can mount it off the side of the boat, you can put it out the back, or even off the front of the boat. So on this boat, you guys, I have the Hummingbird Apex 13 inch screen equipped in um, electronics control box right here. I have kind of did some uh, redneck engineering and I cut a little hole in the door, I moved the lock, put some seal on it. Uh, I can tell you what, uh, a boat manufacturer or a Stevens Marine for that matter can do a much better job than I did. So before you look at this and be like, oh, it's all curved and not really cut right, well, that was me. Anyways, I've got it behind this protective glass because I like to keep the units fresh. I don't like to have to keep cleaning them. You don't want to have a bunch of gunk and a bunch of scales and slime and salt water spraying on them. So I've got it encased in the box. And that's one thing I've done with the whole back of the boat is I've got everything where I've got everything to where I can put it behind a closed waterproof door. So when we're in inclement weather, when we're taking lots of splash or when we're playing in the salt water, everything can get locked behind something safe and stay protected. So on this side behind this door, I've got all my switches, again, protected, enclosed. It keeps it out of the elements. I've got just a, kind of my junk, basically my oversized glove box right there. Got my other controls, some other necessary equipment, some little tools, stuff behind here. I like to keep, I don't like to run a sixth or excuse me, a seventh chair in the boat. I generally stand a lot, but I always keep a nice little foldy chair just so I can have it in and out of the way. And what's really great about doing something like this is that when I have a fish on and I want the space or things are hopping, things are happening, I can quickly close that, stick it against the side of the boat, uh, and then it's out of the way and I have more room for activities. So besides the four chairs that I have on box seats, the best add-on that I've made to this boat is the fish finder rail system. So as you can see, I got three uh, fish finder rod holder stations on this rail. And what's fantastic about this is when I put my top up or when I need to move them, when I need to adjust them for trolling, all I've got to do is pull a pin and then just give it a slide down the rail. Now this comes in real handy, like I said, when I have the top up and I want to have all the rods out the boat or I'm anchor fishing or I'm trolling for kokanee and I have my downriggers and I want to move them. They move quick and easy and they have these little pins that lock in very very handy for when you're fishing they also have a removable rod holder extension so with this other pin here these pop out and if you're going to net a fish you need to get something out of the way um, maybe you're doing casting for the day like we're twitching coho or fishing for bottom fish and we don't even need the rod holders up in the way i can walk by pull the pins tuck these away underneath the seat throw them in my fish box whatever you can get them out of the way just like that the best part about the rail system though is what I'm going to show you next. Now when it comes to cleaning fish guys, I don't want to have my cutting board out all the time. So what I'd like to do is I pull this pin, remove the rod holder, set it in the side, and slide this guy down to about right here. And let me show you why. My fish fighter fillet table is locked perfectly in the Columbia's fish box. What's great about it is I keep this little bungee cord here and this fish fighter table is almost like it was custom made for this box. I can still throw fish in it. I have a nice place to store it. Even in the roughest water, it doesn't flop down. It stays attached and just kind of nestles right in there. Like I said, it was almost like Chuck and the guys at Fish Fighter just purposely designed that for this fish box. So all I gotta do, detach the bungee, pull it out, drop the extensions. They lock right into the rod holder. I've got this one. Oops. I've got this one on a slider. Boom. And now I've got an elevated fish fillet table, which is fantastic for when you're doing a lot of salmon, a lot of kokanee, a lot of bottom fish. You're not hunched over on the rail. I'm I'm a tall guy, so having this table up like this makes us fantastic. My back's not sore when I'm done doing my work. Obviously, everything drains over the side. And of course, I've got the fillet away fish mats in the green color right here. These ones have been used and abused for months and months and months in the boat. As you can see, I'm still using them. They're fantastic. They keep the fish from slipping. They're super easy to clean up. And when it comes to putting this thing away, everything drains off. Give it a quick rinse, take it out of the holder, close it back up, right back in the fish box and locked and it's ready for the next time. And the other, and the other part of the fish box, I carry a five gallon bucket that just has garbage everything else and i've got a couple other oops that glove shouldn't be there i've got garbage and i've got a couple other little areas that i can store some snacks and just some other necessary equipment right in there since my columbia does have three locking um, storages up front the first one was the fish box and the garbage the second one 
is all my type one life jackets, necessary tools, and just some other safety equipment that you're required to carry in the boat. And in my third locker, my upfront locker, I've got my 36 volt Dakota lithium battery, which of course powers my Minn Kota Riptide Tarova motor. So guys, I cannot speak more highly of the Dakota lithium 36 volt battery. I can tell you there were days that when we're twitching coho, when we're bottom fishing, when we're using um, our Minn Kota Tarova um, pretty extensively throughout the day that at the end of the day using standard, um, you know, three 12 volt batteries, we'd wear out of time. You would you'd start to see power loss. You'd start to see, you wouldn't basically get your like full day of fishing in. And these were with like fresh, new, you know, less than a year old batteries. Ever since I've switched to the Dakota Lithium 36 volt, I have had no issues of actually running that motor all throughout my long day of fishing um, and using it intensively, using it in heavy currents, using it in heavy trolling, using it for long um, days kokanee fishing. Um, it's been fantastic, not to mention too, I have absolutely eliminated a lot of the excess weight that's in the bow of this boat and I have more space. I've got some sea anchors in there and when I'm down at the coast, I put a lot of other um, safety equipment and things that I'll just need, but I've got plenty of space up there too uh, because of that. And it just sits on a Stevens Marine uh, battery tray that I had them install as well. All right guys, going back to the 36 volt Minn Kota Tarova. Again, if this thing were to fall off my boat tomorrow, I would absolutely go out and put another one on it. When it comes to boat control, when it comes to twitching, um, it's necessary equipment now for the Pacific Northwest. Bass guys have been doing it for years. Um, I really cannot imagine a boat ever that I will guide out of that's not equipped with one of these motors. We use it for sturgeon fishing, we use it for twitching, we use it for bass fishing, we use it for everything, salmon trolling. I do have it mounted with the fish fighter um, puck system, which is very easily removable. All I gotta do is pull the pin, slide it out, the motor can go off, and I can put an anchor nest made by fish fighter right on it. I don't have that equipped on me today, but you guys get the idea. It's very modular, it's very interchangeable, and it works fantastic. It's stable, it doesn't rock. It's about as fixed and as solid as you could ever ask in a bow mounting system. I've rambled on enough guys. If you guys have any questions or comments, I'll be sure to come back to this video and check down below. If you have any other questions on the Illumina Columbia or how I've got the boat equipped, be sure to comment below. I'll check it out. I promise I'll come back to this video. Now let's get on with some early Columbia River Springer fishing. everybody welcome to another episode of addicted life camera black on catch and guide service today we are fishing on the columbia river for some early springers we're calling it early springers because as far as i'm concerned there's still snow in the hills the weather's been garbage but we actually have a really nice day got a good crew with us today and if we don't catch any fish we're at least going to catch a good lunch so i got my buddy bed adams here cooking extraordinaire uh we've got some surprises some really cool stuff but we're going to be talking a little bit um, probably a little bit of technique today, a little bit of tips and tricks, just try to make a day out of it. Springer fishing this year, 2023, on the Columbia River has been a tough one. So, uh, got out here nice and early, trying to get ourselves, trying to get our baits in the water. Uh, we do have a very good tide today, and that's been kind of the big part of it. Um, so hopefully, we'll get a fish by one o'clock, or at least our bellies will be full, and uh, we're gonna have a good time. So. I was really hoping we'd get the takedown like while I was doing the intro, but I failed at that too already. This might be a day of Cameron failing a lot, so we'll see what happens. Great day on the water, uh, just getting started, and uh, nothing beats uh, some hot cinnamon rolls on the Traeger. So we'll get these going. Uh, this is something that I do whenever I bring my clients out with Cameron, and uh, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun to do. So we look forward to every trip. <laughs> so for the first course today, we've got smoked cinnamon rolls covered in Springer salmon and herring blood gloves, but we'll give it a good shot. <laughs> yeah, Ben, you can go anytime, bud. Really good. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Got 
I want to say is this morning, hey Jeremy, yes, sorry for screwing you out of that fish and making you guys switch because this guy said, oh, the middle rods never catch anything. <laughs> and you were wrong. <laughs> nice keeper. Oh, nice. Yeah, good job, That's Ben. Good looking fish, man. All right. Nice. Nice. First pass fish. Nice one. Love snow it. belly. The old shark boot. Shark boots. Shark boot. The shark truce hunter from Short Bus. Just like that, guys. Just like that. And then, and stay tuned for the end of this episode because now that we got a fish, we actually have a new product that we're gonna be featuring at the end of this episode. So you guys gotta watch all the way till the end. Look at that, right there, guys. So if people wanna know why the Columbia River's been so tough this year, we've had an insanely large run of smelt that was laying in the net, and I'm assuming it came out of Mr. Fish's belly. Picked the salmon hook, through the jaw, pinned up right there. That's the five hot guys. Looking freaking good. Boom. Columbia River Springer. White faced fish, probably headed to one of the lower tribs, but still a Springer nonetheless. Tag him up! Tour from a pulled pork sandwich, or we're going to do a street taco style here on the river. And so, we're going to start with our pulled pork, which has been on for uh, quite some time. Uh, we've got tortillas, onions, and cilantro, bougita cheese, and a chili lime serrano sauce. Just getting served because we had a good little start in the morning and um, glad Ben got a real one in but had a couple other little bites that definitely could have been small could have been springers who knows but bottom line is it didn't end up in the boat so it doesn't really matter but last year at buoy 10 we were having a real like struggle bus kind of morning things were not happening and uh, we busted out the tacos started cooking the second we got lunch in everybody's hands like things started happening so uh, bite went absolutely nuts after that, so now we call it the taco bite. So we're busting out the powers of the old taco bite. Taco bite. The old taco bite right here. So uh, I'm gonna turn this boat around and do a little uphill troll while we eat and see what happens. Sometimes it works wonders. These tacos are really, really full. Here we go. That's about the best meal you'll ever get in a boat. Like two. Okay? Yeah. 
<laughs> that will do it, dude. Acceptable. Super good. Kind of. Acceptable. Dang it, addicts. Of course, first pass fish, bingo fish, and one bite later, we are sitting here out in the middle of the Columbia just trying something new. Came out here, spent a couple hours, didn't find anything. Very typical of this year's Springer season. Uh, talked to the boys down the river today where they had been doing pretty good. Not sure if it's this front moving in, but definitely tough go all around on the river today. Um, but we do. I have a fish to clean, so we're gonna head back here in just a moment and clean that fish, and we got to really we got to show you the new product that uh, we're coming out with over at Addictive Fishing. guys this knife is just ridiculously sharp come on but man I've got this big problem now because now I've got to debate if I want to rinse this fish or not I've got blood slime all over I did the best I could to rinse the outside of the fish but now I got blood on my meat what am I ever going to do you know Cameron this has been a debate with the addicts for quite a long time and I'm really excited about a new product you guys have come out with. And uh, people are concerned about how you rinse your fish and the sanitary element yeah. of that. But we've come out with something new. It's the Addicted Salmon Spray. Now, you might be thinking, why would we use Addicted Salmon Spray? We can infuse all kinds of flavors in here. We use a proprietary charcoal filter here to filter the water. And then we add our own seasonings here. I particularly like lilac. So we're going to go ahead and use the lilac spray here. Uh, to clean this fish and uh, take it home for our family. So that's infusing the, infusing the herb into that's right. the bread. We are infusing this with lilac spray. It's also got a, uh, another feature that we're really proud of here is a dial on top. So you can set it to Springer, you can set it to Kokanee, you can set it to Steelhead, whatever you'd like so we get the proper right. amount of lilac spray or whatever kind of uh, infusion you'd like on your fish. But I like lemon on my halibut. You know, that's a great idea. We've got a halibut setting right over here. Perfect. As your favorite uh, Infusion and then spray away. Perfect. There you go, Addict. You can find this at a, the Addicted store coming soon. And uh, and I think, can we let that out of the bag? There's going to be ahead. a white cloth flavor for Jordan. Perfect. Available at Addicted Fishing right now from the people who brought you the Addicted Piss Jug. All right, Addicts, there you have it. Another slow day Columbia River Springer season 2023. But I tell you what, it's always a pleasure to have Ben and his guys in the boat when he's cooking and we're having a good time. Uh, makes the days go a lot easier. Ben's almost done a hundred trips with me. In fact, we figured out that over the last 10 years, um, the one day, one day at Buoy 10 we have coming up is gonna be our hundredth trip that we've done together. So uh, makes it a lot, makes it really enjoyable, makes it super fun, even on a slow day like today. But bellies are full, got some nice fish to take home, and you guys got to see the new product, the Addicted Salmon Spray for rinsing your fish. So be, be sure to comment down below what flavors you guys want to see in that. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. As always, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for liking and sharing this out and telling your friends and family about Addicted Fishing. We appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.